Before you got here, there was a lot of talk about like chemistry and culture and things like that, like two years ago. Last year, you guys seemed to really kind of come together as a locker room. So then coming into this year, when like you guys arrived, Ish, and Zach, and, and the freshmen, how did you see those guys kind of assimilate into the culture and the, the chemistry, and how did you guys kind of bring them in? Oh, at first, it's a, at first it's, a, um, it's a thing you gotta do internally from um, the new guy's perspective. Um, we do our best job, and when I say we, I mean this year just me, but the coach, the coaching staff does a good job is um, bringing in good character guys. That's what's gonna make this program work. Um, they have to be good character when they show up. Um, and I think that's what we did a good job. And then once they're good character people, they will see why it's going to be beneficial to buy in and um, trust the people around them, the players and the coaching staff. And I feel like that's how the the, the, the bond works and um, really trusting each other on and off the court and then um, building a winning program. That being said, what made Ish in particular fit in so well? How did that work so quickly? Well, um, you know, shout out to Ish first of all for winning six man a year, but um, there's something to be said there because he was a really good player in Rhode Island, their, their best player. Um, he comes here and he starts, but he understands that his role is more beneficial to us coming off the bench. And only good character guys, and the same thing that happened with Nike last year, it's about having good character guys. See, if you don't have a good character guy, they're gonna take an offensive of taking that role off the bench, and they're not gonna take the position as serious as um, as Ish and Nike had did, um, and go win that award, and 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 and, and take it seriously, and may, maybe even take it even more seriously to make it a point. I'm gonna be the best bench player, not only for this team but in the conference. So um, that starts with being good character one, and just being a good player second. From from your perspective, did he understand that right away when right Coach away. made that move? Right away, right away, right away. Um, I wasn't there for the conversation, but I mean, Coach clearly has a good spot and role for a six man. Clearly, as as he showed, and um, you know, he buy, he buys in. That's all it is, just buying in. Like, how have you seen Buck? I mean, triple double, and you're t they're talking about him in mock drafts, and then you know the ups and downs of a season. How have you seen him handle everything and grow? Uh, I, I would tell my people all the time, um, me personally, I wouldn't be able to, not only I wouldn't be able to play that good as a freshman, but handle everything on the outside as well as, he's, as he has. And, um, you know, he's going to keep, he's going to have to keep getting good, I mean, better and better at that because um, we're going to keep winning. So um, just moving forward, just hopefully he can keep up the same thing he's been doing all year. Congratulations on your ACC owner, by the way. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, uh, are you or anybody on your team NCAA tournament bubble watchers? No, we're basketball players. So um, we don't spend much time doing that, um, as, as far as I know. But what we do know is you get in the tournament if you win games, and you get an automatic pay if you win the tournament. So that's what we do know. Blake, were you shocked to see um, Jalen Lowe not on an all-ACC team? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's pretty much as short as I'm going to keep it. I mean, I respect the committee of who makes these votes and the coaches. But, um, you know, Jalen Law has a lot to do with um, the turnaround this, this this year has had, like, a lot. His fingerprint is all over that. So, um, you know, could have did it. I don't know why they didn't, but um, he definitely deserved a spot in there. He just, he just he didn't get it, and it happens like that sometimes. Like, what excites you about this time of year playing in a tournament setting? What excites me this year, man? Oh, I mean, you know, honestly, you know what excites me is shout out to women's basketball all around the country this 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 last week, man. It was super exciting. And, um, it got me excited. Um, South Carolina versus LSU, and even the game before Tennessee versus uh, USC. Um, so California USC versus Stanford is it? Um, and I'm missing one. I'm missing one. The uh, ACC championship with Notre Dame one. Like all of that stuff was high level basketball. And um, you know that watching that really, really, really got me excited. Um, just the level of competition it was showed me what it's going to be. So I'm really excited to you know go raise that bar and go touch that bar with a women's center that.
Jay, when you like when you watch uh, Caitlin Clark, you sit there and see some of the shots. Caitlin takes, Clark, you, Caitlin you, Clark, so I didn't mention that either. Do you see when she takes some shots? Do you you get intrigued? Go, yeah, it's like heck yeah, man. And and it's, coach, it's, I could do that, and it, you do that sometimes. Yeah, it's funny because um, shout out shout out to Iowa Iowa winning too. Um, I forget who they who they was playing, but um, I meant to mention that too because Caitlin can't be not mentioned. But um, yeah, I see Caitlin Clark. That 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 stuff takes practice. That's it. You're really good to do the things she does. So um, yeah, heck yeah, that that stuff excited me. I went to the gym that night, like just just watching it, getting excited. Blake, I don't think it's mentioned that you were a standout football player and, and, and you know coming up and had scholarship offers and whatnot. But over the last two years that you've been here, has it ever been brought up to you by maybe somebody in the football program here, like hey, come down and do some workouts, or maybe you can come and. No, I don't think Coach Capel is going to let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, would, would you? I mean, when was the last time you caught a, caught a football? It's been a while. Uh, what I know, I mean, shoot, I feel like I'm one of the better basketball players in the nation, so I wouldn't spend much time playing football. But, um, you know, probably could, but I, I don't. What if the Bucks called you? Man, I would, <laughs> <laughs> I would do just like that. I would stop and think about it. Then I would also say, I seen Aaron Donald at the game a couple of days ago, and I would think about that as well and say no. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have had Aaron Donald at a game. I mean, Jay Cole was in the building a few weeks ago. Carmelo before a game earlier this year. What is that like as a as a player in this program to see all these celebrities coming through? Uh, that's, that's cool. I mean, sure. I mean, they want to see you play, so I guess it's a compliment. But um, it only happens when you win. and be a team that's, you know, worth seeing and being around. So um, I appreciate those guys showing support. Blake, on Saturday, the last game, of the, your last game here, um, you, you were out on the court for about 20 minutes after the game, shaking hands, taking pictures. Why is that stuff important to you? Man, because I, I, I mean, little do they know, I can't believe it. And um, just two years ago, um, when I was dropping off groceries at people's front door, nobody was asking for my autograph. So, you know, I really like to take advantage of that type of stuff because you never know when it might be gone. When you look at that journey over the last two years, how much have you grown as a person because of your time here? Oh, I mean, it's, it's made me the person I am today. And I really love the person I am today because I feel like I'm humble and I really listen to people and I try to learn. And um, it wouldn't have happened if I went through what I went through. He's a freshman and obviously played in playoffs and tournaments and things like that before, but do you have any words of advice for these guys as you head into the ACC tournament? Nothing. I ain't got nothing because they know what to do. It's March, and that's what I've been telling them for ever since March started. It's March. There's really no time. This, this should be no motivating speech. There should be no, oh, I didn't know, or I forgot to play. We've been playing all year. It's March. It's time for your best to come out. Has has Ish been talking about going back to his hometown to play at all this week? Say it again. Has Ish been talking about going back to his hometown to play this week at all? Because it's in D.C. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I, you're just not enlightening me at that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't heard him say anything about it. But, I mean, hopefully it brings his best for sure. I, I'll take it. Like, you, you think there's room for the tournament to get better? The NCAA tournament to get better? No. Nah, to teams? No. Nah. No, no. I, I like it. it's, it's 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 great size. It's perfect size. Um, you know, some people get some people get um, nipped out. You know, some people get missed, and that's part of it. That's what makes it exciting. So, um, man, I love the tournament. I think it's I think it's set up perfect. Like you guys are the four seed in the ACC tournament, yet there's some outside talk that you guys might not have a quote-unquote good enough resume for the NCAAs. I mean, when you hear that kind of thing or see that kind of thing, what makes you think that people are thinking that way about the ACC? I don't know. I really don't get it. Um, I could go I could go a pretty long time speaking on it, but um, this is a good – this is a good conference. That goes without being said now, historically. Um, the players in it are good. We have multiple – projected first round draft picks in this conference. Um we got, we got I don't I don't get it. I really don't even really understand why it is the way it is, how they say it, but um you know at the end of the day, the people who pick these teams, I feel like they know their sports and they know their basketball and they're gonna they're gonna make the right decisions. Do you look at analytics, whether it's you know like you know, rankings or anything like that, but I mean 
on the floor metrics, you know, PER, that kind of, do you look at those kind of analytics at all? I have no idea. That's a foreign language to me. Uh, I really don't know. I, re I What I do know is the teams that typically win get in there. So that's, that's what I know. So we, I just, all I preach is win.